Hello, welcome to another video by Moxa Marine. In this video, I'm uh, installing a Delco EST ignition system on a Mercruiser 4.3 liter V6. This engine is a pre-Vortec, probably around uh, somewhere uh, between 1990 and uh, 1995. Um, so it, it had the Mercruiser Thunderbolt 4 system originally, and um, I, every Mercruiser engine I build, I just go ahead and upgrade them with Delco EST parts. Uh, I don't charge for labor because I'm gonna have, I would have had to put the ignition system back together anyway. Uh, all I charge is for the parts. Um, and so um, in this video, um, this is another uh, video in my series on the Spark of the Eel ignition system. And um, it's just a few more tips and tricks and troubleshooting tips on how to, uh, some of the finer points of the uh, ignition system. So one of the things I've said previously in a previous video, I believe, is uh, I think of video number two, maybe, um, or was it video one? Um, I only provide general motors ignition modules. I do not provide knockoff. I do not buy a knockoff ignition module. This is a general motors marine ignition module, part number uh, 19418839 and uh, the D29 doesn't count. Um, so anyway, this is the module that I generally buy. It's the newer version, and then there's an even newer version of that, meaning mean there's a different part number, but they're all D1965A. So if you order that, you're probably okay. So, but what I said was there would be a General Motors logo on the top of the module if it was if it was the right module. And by the only reason it's dirty because it's been in the shop for a little bit while and it's still brand new. Um, so I bought, I've been buying some other modules, D1965A. This is the box it came in. And uh, it's got a different part number. It's not, the part number's not on the bottom. It looks almost like a knockoff. But uh, I've since found out that this is actually the uh, um, this is actually a General Motors part number, and uh, so it, even though it doesn't have the General Motors logo on it, I believe it is a General Motors part. And um, so as I bought, I bought several in this box with D1965A, and they had that 281, 281845333 part number on. I doubt if um, if there were knockoffs and something like for somebody that substituted a a lesser quality part in the box and then shipped it out to me. I don't think you'd have that happen twice. So I believe this is a, a, the earlier model of the genuine GM part. So just because it does have the GM logo on top does not mean it's not necessarily the General Motors logo. I mean, General Motors part. However, having said that, I'm gonna install this on this distributor and run this engine and uh, see if it has the same time of curve and the same characteristics as the newer module and uh, find out if, it's, if it is a real, a real genuine, genuine GM marine module. So go ahead and let me put this, I'm going to go ahead and install this module. I'm not going to show that on camera. Um, I don't like sewing, wrenching, and using screwdrivers and tools on camera because it's a waste of your time. Um, if you know how to use a tool and wrenches and stuff like that, you probably shouldn't be rebuilding a boat motor. But um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and mount this module. And then uh, I'm going to put, it comes with a heat compound on the bottom. You must use that. And uh, then I'm going to put this module in there and put the distributor cap on and then show you some more tips. Okay, I now have the uh, module installed. I have the distributor cap bolted back down on top of the distributor. And um, I'm about to wire up this uh, Delco EST system on this older Mercruiser. I've already mounted the coil. I'm not going to show that. Uh, I wasn't going to show how to do that. That's pretty straightforward. There's two bolts mount to the, you just mount on the back of the cylinder head and you're done. Um, that's my own custom mounted, custom made bracket, by the way. It's very rigid, um, extremely rigid. So anyway, um, so this is an older Merc Cruiser. It's uh, before 1994 or 1995. It was pre-Vortec. And you know that because it's got the slanted uh, holes that hold the intake manifold on, on instead of the straight up and down ones, which a Vortec would have. So um, I'm installing the Delco EST system. So the old system it had was a Thunderbolt 4. And it was mounted right here on the side of the exhaust manifold on the uh, uh, port side. And it had uh, these connections. So it had a purple and a gray. That was on your ignition coil. The purple, the purple would have been the purple would have been the, the uh, positive to your Thunderbolt module. The gray is the signal that actually fired your coil, and made your spark occur. The red, the white or red stripe, and the white or green stripe were were mounted on the distributor on the uh, Thunderbolt distributor. There was two terminals, two screws. And these two wires land on the two screws, the uh, white with green and the white with red. 
And uh, then this other wire is just a ground wire was strapped to the, uh, it was mounted to the distributor. And the other end of it was mounted up here next to your Thunderbolt. It was just a ground connection between your distributor and your Thunderbolt. And that's it. That was all, the, that's all the wire that was on this harness. So again, so down here on your harness that was on the, on the engine, you had a purple, that's the power to the system from your ignition switch that comes off pin, I think it's pin five. Here's your boat connector right here, your boat harness connector, and that's pin five is your ignition. So that's what this purple is tied to. Um, the gray is your tachometer signal going back to your tachometer up in your dash, and that's on uh, pin, I don't remember, which, I think it's pin two, I want to say it's pin two in here, it could be three, I'm not sure. But it uh, doesn't really matter. It's just one of the pins in this connector. It goes to your tachometer. But that's what this gray goes to. Then the, uh, these, two, these two white with green stripes, this is one, this is one wire. It's con it's con it's, there's continuity between here and here. And so what, the, what this was, this wire here went up to your terminal. If you have an older model like this, you'll have, this is your th shift kill switch on your, uh, this is what shifts, sh kills your ignition when you shift gears back out of gear not into gear and uh that's the terminal block with this switch on it so this green this white with green landed on one of those terminals and the other one went to ground the other terminal had a wire going to ground um let's see if i find it it might have been this one right here uh, i'm not sure but anyway um yeah it could have been this this ground and this let's see if i can get here um the ground and this green. These two probably, this ground and this green probably landed on that switch right there. So one side was ground going to ground, the other side's going to the, the shift kill. So this other end of the shift kill, this this uh, white with the uh, green stripe, it simply landed on the same terminal distributor as this white with green stripe here. And that's what killed your ignition. So when you grounded the ignition signal going back to the Thunderbolt, that's what killed the ignition for it to uh, shift out of gear. Um, so what I'm going to do is reuse that and rewire the system for the Delco EST. So the difference is, um, like I said, the Merc Cruiser used that switch to ground the ignition, and that's what killed your ignition. The Delco EST system does the opposite. It uses it, it applies 12 volts to terminal. Uh, let's see which one. Which terminal was it? I've covered it up now. I can't, well, here's another one. Here's a module. So the Delco works by putting 12 volts on terminal B which is the second from the left and that's your bypass signal or your bypass terminal and what that does is it basically uh i've explained that in another video but that when you apply 12 volts to the second from left terminal this distributor it kills the ignition momentarily so that's how the uh delco does it it, it provides 12 volts that actually kills the ignition all right so i'm gonna go ahead and wire this up and i'll show you what i've done what i've done when i'm done but um when i'm finished but I'm going to wire this up to what I think is the best way to do this. Uh, if you have this, if you have this older style with a terminal switch on here. Now the newer style don't have, doesn't have this terminal block. What they have is butt splices, butt connectors, or, or not butt, bullet. They have bullet connectors that apply, that, that you hook your switch into your harness. And um, they're quick disconnect, but this one here use these terminal block, this terminal block. So if you have this, this is the video you need to pay attention to, to how, how to wire up a uh, Duco EST system to the older models. So let me go ahead and do it, and I'll show you what, all the wiring when I'm done. Okay, I've not completed this, but I'm going to describe what I've done so far and ex explain what I'm doing to complete it tomorrow. So, um, like I was saying, the shift kill, the wire, this white with green strike was coming here. And it was also going over there towards your shift kill. So I went ahead and landed it on the bottom screw, and I matched it up with the white green on the bottom side coming on this off this screw here, this this wire here continues on to this, and it goes to the up. It comes out here and goes to the top of your switch. Your body, the bottom of your switch is this black wire, and this is where it gets kind of kind of tricky. Um, you cannot land it on this terminal. This terminal is screwed into this metal housing, which grounds it. So you'll have a direct short from positive to ground if you do that. You do not want to when you go to shift kill, you would uh, cause a short and, and melt your wires or, or blow your fuse or circuit breaker. If you did it that way, so you cannot you cannot land any wire on this terminal because this this screw right here is screwed into metal, and it would ground anything. So anything attached here with the 12 volts on it would would cause a direct short. So you can't use that screw. It's only for mechanical mounting of that terminal block. 
So what I'm gonna do, so this, this wire here already has a ring terminal on it from the factory. And it's too short, I really don't wanna cut it. So I'm gonna leave that ring terminal on there. I'm gonna provide a ring terminal on my kit that you'll, that you'll crimp onto this red wire. And then you just put the ring terminals together and put them together with a, a nut and a, um, a bolt and a nut. And I will provide that, I'm gonna have to find out what bolt and nut goes with this, but I'll, I'll provide, the, it'll be stainless steel. I'll provide the nut and it'll be a, like a nylock nut, uh, a bolt or nylock nut to hold these ring, two ring terminals together and that will complete your shift kill. The other end of the ring, the other end of the shift kill wire, I just looped around through here, came out down here and it plugs in right here. I provide this harness with the kit so all you have to do is terminate this end of this red wire with a ring terminal and uh, bolt it to that. And that would complete your shift kill. All right, so let me recap. So what I did, I took the purple wire, which is hot coming in, twisted it together with this green white, or white with green stripe, put them in a butt splice, crimped it down, and then took this pink wire from my ignition coil, crimped them together. So you got purple to pink, and the white wire is also tapped into that. The purple, the white with green comes over here. So that means I got 12 volts on this terminal all the time. When every ignition's running, I got 12 volts here, which means I got 12 volts here to the top of the switch. You do not have 12 volts on the bottom of the switch until this thing clicks like this and turns it on. So that's the only time you'll have 12 volts on this bottom wire, but you still don't have a short. So when the bottom wire, is, uh, when this when this turns on, it will send 12 volts to here. When which when when this red wire is ter terminated to that. It'll send 12 volts to right here. So that'll activate your shift kill on your distributor. And that's pretty much it. So that's that's the extent of the wiring um, on, the, on the Thunderbolt 4. Thunderbolt 5 is a little more complicated. But um, if you'll notice, I moved the coil from here over here because all the wires were over here that made it easier and the coil fit. So that's where I put it. I mounted it right here, and it's going to work just as well there. All right. So, of course, you got your distributor to your coil harness right here I come, that comes with my kit. This connector here comes with the kit. And uh, coil comes with the kit, this uh, connector here. So let me last explain the last wire. So if you notice, I haven't connected this white wire to the gray wire. The gray wire is your tack signal, so this is your tack signal going back to your tachometer. So for troubleshooting purposes, do not connect the tachometer until after the system is working. So in other words, leave this disconnected, get it running, get it tuned, get everything working great until you know that it's working fine. Then your last connection should be connecting this white to the gray wire. I'll provide a butt splice. You'll cut this ring terminal off here and butt splice this white to the gray, and that will be your tachometer signal. The reason I say that is because tachometers have been known that I've had experiences where tachometers were bad or defective and kept the engine from starting, or they made it run rough. So if you leave that tachometer disconnected until after the engine's tuned and running great and you know everything's working fine and then you connect the tachometer and everything goes to crap you know it's your tachometer causing the problem so that's one way of troubleshooting the system um another thing is uh let's say um let's say it don't it won't spark or you're having trouble getting the spark well there's another troubleshooting tip you, tip you can do if you don't connect this wire yet so what you do take this loose from distributor just pull this loose here and leave it off Leave that, leave this wire off. Turn the ignition key on. So take your, take your, your coil lead from here. Take the wire that goes from here to here. Take it loose from here. Put a spark plug in this, in the end of this wire that's connected here. Touch the spark plug to ground. Take this wire, this white wire, with the ignition, turn the ignition key on. Take this white wire, touch it to ground. When you touch the ground, it won't spark. But as soon as you pull this white wire loose, you should see a spark on the spark plug. That's what causes the spark when you, when you pull the, so when you make this connection, you're making, you're providing 12 volt power to the coil. The coil loads up with a magnetic field. When you pull this loose, the magnetic field collapses and that's what causes your spark. So if you hold this down and then pull it away from the ground, when you pull this white wire away from ground, you will get a spark on this coil if you have a spark plug attached to it. That way you know your coil is good. You know, it, it tells you several things. You know you got 12 volt power to your coil coming through this wire here. You know your coil is getting uh, power and everything's working on your coil. So that means it must be in the distributor. It's either the pickup inside the distributor or the module. Can't be anything else because there's nothing else in the distributor that makes it work. There's only three components in this system. You got your pickup in the coil, I mean, you know, pickup inside the distributor, which triggers the module. The module then uh, fires the coil, fires the spark plug through the coil. There's really three simple systems. Pickup, coil, module. That's all there is to it from, from a uh, operating standpoint of the Delco EST. All right.
So like I say, um, if you're having trouble getting a spark, you can use this wire, touch it to ground, pull it away from ground, it'll cause a spark on the spark plug if you have it connected to this terminal. And that's how you know that your coil is good and your power to your coil is good. And once you're all done and everything works, connect this white to the gray the very last step after it's all running and that should power up your tack and your tack should work. If it doesn't or your engine runs bad, disconnect it because you get a bad tack and then replace your tachometer. All right, I hope that helps. Um, this engine should be running by tomorrow. Everything's done on it. Um, except for I've got to uh, lift it off the stand, put the flywheel on it, put the coupler on it, put the rear housing on it, mount it on a, a wooden stand on the ground, and then run it. So I should be doing that tomorrow.